Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis here with a look at Perfect Effects Scouting Force X, who totally do not reflect anything. These guys are sold as a trio, thank goodness. They're kind of tiny, but they're also full of spunk. So let's dive in and take a look at what they got. I'm going to begin by stripping these guys down to their most naked form so we can see what lies beneath all the guns and knives. Also, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to look at one for this purpose. Although I can show you that they are basically identical aside from the colored bands on their wrists and this dude's belly. So after giving you a really nice look at what this belly looks like, I'm going to set these guys aside. I don't know if you noticed this, by the way, but these dudes are kind of small. I mean, a scout toy that hundreds of people have at this point is definitely a lot taller than them. But they're a nice minion size to go with the recent Reveal the Shield Legends toys. But I do not hold that against the little dude. Tiny Robots is Perfect Effect's modus operandi. They do it on purpose, they do it to have an image of their own. And they do it to show just how much engineering you can stuff into a tiny little bit of plastic. I think it's cool, but it is something that will definitely turn some people off in a way that is a little bit irreparable. All that doom and gloom aside, uh, the articulation on these dudes is part of the draw. They are so small that you would expect them to be legends posable, but they are not. Uh, there are plenty of ball joints involved in this process, but uh, they've got a lot of hugely ranged motion all over their bodies. Um, and a lot of it is pretty solid as well. I've messed with these guys quite a bit, and their ball joints have not gotten very loose. And if the ball joints do get loose, you can use some floor polish to retighten the things, uh, worst case. Also, these ankle tilts are the best thing ever, because they have huge feet. And this means that no matter how wide a leg stance you put them in, they tend to be able to flatten their stance and be very solid. If there was one qualm, though, it's that the wrists have no motion. And I know this is getting a little bit demanding, but uh, if these things had a wrist swivel, I would say that their articulation was a 10 out of 10, uh, even though I don't use a numerical scale. As for the sculpt and paint, their colors and sculpt are meant to bring out thoughts of Reflector from the old cartoon. Between the purple and gray overtones, as well as the individualized colored wristbands and shin apps, these three guys are very G1 cartoon with just a hint of the original toy. So there's a cool mixture of... Transformers and a micro change going on in here. Also, the dude in the middle totally has a shutter sculpted inside that socket on his belly, which is kind of cool. Uh, on the downside, though, their head sculpt is a little bit doofy. The gaping mouth um, is completely out of focus and also just doesn't really do it for me as well as I'd hoped. I like everything about the head except that mouth. Uh, it's not enough to ruin the toy for me, but it just means that you, you lose a little bit of something in there, I'm not sure what. I wish they'd each had an individual expression, or that at least if they were going to share an expression, the mouth had been kept closed. But that's a hella nitpick, and I'm done looking at these naked guys. Let's clothe them up in their accessories. So let me say it up front, I'm a little bit bummed that this dude's shoulder pads are separate pieces given that they're part of the camera mode. That aside, I like how their base bodies can all look so different given some applications of different kinds of shoulder armor, different kinds of weapons, all using modular attachment points, which means you could swap equipment between these guys with little trouble. This does involve a whole lot of little bits and pieces that have to be plug and played on and off these little robots, which again may not be your cup of tea. But as severely equipable little soldiers, these guys do a pretty good job. Anyway, let's begin doing some individual looks at these dudes and start off with the leader of the group, Edge. You think you know him. Oh, you think you know him. And that's not uncommon, as he has the most in common with a reflector look out of the three robots. Aside from the shutter chest, he's also got those shoulder pads from the viewfinder. And when fully equipped, kind of makes me think that he's like a reflector clone who just had enough. And one day put on a pair of massive arm pads and picked up two huge guns to go and make some justice in his own style. While he's technically the most vanilla of the trio, I think he's also the most effective standalone package. He looks like he could fight at a distance or up close in melee. He's got personal protection and personal firearms. This is the one that would chill out in your pocket when you go to work. This is the one that would live on the dashboard of your car. Also, that little knife that uh, plugged onto his butt can be removed from the sheath, and uh, this can be used as a weapon as well, although it's actually harder to remove the knife from the sheath than it is to just pull the sheath off and then kind of carefully pull the knife out. It's a very, very tight fit. Um, I do like that it's included because uh, it adds that, that last little notch of these guys are a specially trained, heavily armed strike force. And uh, I like the idea that, you know, in a pinch, they uh, they whip out this combat knife 
and uh, and totally just start shanking some mothers uh, when when their guns are out of ammunition or they're they're caught in a in a pinch. And Edge makes very good use of the articulation on this body. Since he's basically a manic gun kata dude with a pair of giant pistols. Frankly, it's more like he's dual-wielding plasma shotguns than pistols, to be honest. Anyway, he looks great when you put him into some super acrobatic poses or just I've got two guns and I'm a badass kind of stances. The dude is solid, so let's move on to his next teammate, S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. goes from being a slight departure from the usual reflector look to being a massive departure from the usual reflector look, mostly brought on by his missile pod shoulder pads, and of course the giant sniper rifle and huge riot shield he's carrying. I love those little missiles though. They've all got a little bit of sculpting on each warhead, and that really won me over. And the shield actually has a little viewing slit for him to spy from when he's using it to protect himself from attacks. So in concept, I think shield is great. Unfortunately, in execution, I find he is a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, number one, his gun is so huge that it's actually really hard for him to look like he's using it properly. Uh, ideally, he'd be able to hold it with two hands and, and take hold of this other uh, grip part, but because he doesn't have a wrist swivel, he can never really get his hands to uh, maneuver in place in a way where it can look like he's actually using it as a sniper rifle. So that's a bit of a bummer. Also, the shield, um, I think, is great, but it only works in poses, really, when it's planted on the ground. This is because the handle is actually on a free-turning axis, and it doesn't really lock in place anywhere. It's very tightly held by his hand, but the axis that it's connected to the shield by is pretty loose. So if you have him holding his shield behind him or something like that, it's it's very easy for it to uh, just flop down like that. Um... It's not to say he's a bad figure, it's just that in comparison to the other two, he falls a little bit flatter. I think if the shield handle clicked into place on the shield itself, or if he had wrist swivel so he could get a little bit more mileage out of his giant sniper rifle, I'd be a little bit more into him. As it is, I find he is often the most unwieldy looking of the trio. Which is a kind of funny thing to say given what you're about to see with the final member, Bullet. Bullet is my favorite of these three because he's completely insane. Thanks to the little flip-up back panel, he has this gigantic backpack, and he's also got this gigantic Gatling gun. He is all kinds of gigantic stuff plugged on a tiny little guy. He also really shines with the posability of this body because thanks to its uh, elbow joints and whatnot, and thanks to the placement of the pegs on this Gatling gun, you can get him to do a lot of really nice Gatling gun poses. And usually these poses I don't see on action figures all that often. So uh, this was a really cool little surprise that he could totally look like he's properly using this. And you can just peg the hands into the pegs and just uh, wave this Gatling gun around and his, his arms kind of move naturally with it, which is really cool. Uh, it also spins. And uh, his backpack, I have it put together kind of like a giant ammo drum right now, but uh, it's actually meant to be a jet pack, which is, uh, you know, something where it might not entirely work for you, but uh, I think it's a cool way to to give him some uh, some character and some options. Also, this really helps counterbalance this thing so that no matter what pose you have him in, if he has like the backpack and the Gatling gun on him, he is not going to fall down at all. So, uh, Bullet is kind of the winning clincher of this trio for me. Edge is a little bit vanilla, but fairly effective. Shield's got some good ideas that don't entirely pan out all that well. And Bullet is just crazy and works. Also, his craziness can spread to the other two through a combined weapon mode. By taking components from each of the members of the Scouting Force X, you can create this insane super laser cannon chest thing mode, which looks really anime, really super robot -y, and is kinda cool. It does feel like something that was sort of thrown in at the last minute when it was realized that a whole bunch of these connection ports are swappable in this way, but I think it adds something cool to this set in that they have this sort of uber-powerful attack they can activate if they, for some reason, decide to blow up an entire country. And on the bright side, if you don't like it, it's really easy to entirely forget that it's there. There was a lot of part swapping in there, and, uh, I'll just say this. If you think you've seen part swapping, you ain't seen nothing yet. When combining the scouting force into their shared alternate mode, every single tiny piece has a specific place to go. Even the knives have sculpted silhouettes in their given storage spots. Stuff also packs down densely, most exemplified in just how much stuff gets stuffed into the lens attachment. This tube is loaded with three guns and two knives, and is made from a jetpack and a pair of arm guards. The riot barrier holds all of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s personal equipment, 
barring the core of his rifle. Mounted on top of the tripod formed from the barrel of Bullet's Gatling gun, this is the base of the alt mode. All three Scouting Force members convert identically, compressing cleanly into a cube-like form. This showcases perfect effect skill from previous releases of making an interesting process out of a robot becoming a somewhat abstract shape. Simple tabs and slots loosely hold the three bots together until the riot shield locks them together dead solid. The remaining pieces finish off the alt mode in ways that throw back to the original microchange toy. In fact, the entire process is a huge homage to classic Takara robots in how it outright embraces parts forming instead of quietly tolerating it. This does unfortunately make the process a little time consuming, but I find it satisfying enough to warrant it. As for the end result, yes it does look like an old timey camera, kind of like the old reflector toy, but the addition of the mini tripod and the missiles in the flash, as well as the extended lens's previous role as a laser cannon kind of lend it this image of being either a small old timey camera or a very camera-like artillery turret. I also love that everything is packed inside this mode. All those scattered bits and pieces in that trio of robots form one nice handheld package. It's really dense, and uh, you can kind of feel the small bit of weight in it when you lift it up. It, it's a lot heavier than it actually looks because of all the stuff inside. And it is totally the right size to be worked by or pointed at other scout size toys. Scouting Force X is far more an homage to the Microchange Camera Combiner team than its succeeding Transformers repurposing. Certainly the colors call back to Reflector the Decepticon, but the large number of accessories and pornographically intricate parts forming process make me think of retro Takara and Bandai toys more than anything else. This release is also the most robust one Perfect Effect has done to date, right down to the individual robots being a little thicker and heavier than the Warriors or Ninja. I really love it, but you do need to be cool with Perfect Effect's miniaturized aesthetic. This is a pricey set, and while I feel I got my money's worth, if you need size in your robots it may disappoint. However, this is also the first Perfect Effect set with a non-abstract alt mode, and that does a lot to make it one of their best efforts to date. If you're on the fence, try to see a set in person. That will likely push you into making a decision either way. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. I hope this video's helped you out in some way, because I've got to run. There are sleeping civilians to photograph, and I only have so long before sunrise.